Hello everyone, welcome back to the Oskies YouTube channel. As you can see, it's actually been quite a while since the last video because I've actually had my ISKI exams, which are the final exams that you have at the end of medical school. So now that I very happily passed that exam, it means that things have nicely slowed down a little bit. So as you can maybe hear from the crickets outside, I'm on holiday, which means I actually have a little bit more time to think about what the topic of this video is going to be, which is the elective. So for those of you who don't know what an elective is, at the end of your medical school, there's penciled out time that your university assigns for a self-organized placement. Now that can be in any specialty of your choice and tends to be that you can pick any hospital in the world to do it in. But given that very wide range of choices, it can be quite an overwhelming decision to make. But don't worry, I'm gonna bring you along with me planning mine so that we can get this sorted step by step. So the first thing you want to decide is, do you want to split your elective? So for me personally, the time is two months. So the choice is, do I want to split that one month in a certain specialty and another month in another specialty? Or even do I want to do one month in one hospital and another month in another hospital? So if you were to do a split, it can give you a broader exposure in two different specialties. But as you can imagine, if you're going from one hospital to another, that's gonna be a little bit more stressful for you potentially which is why it's gonna be really important to try and figure out what your goals are going to be. So think about your goals. Are you aiming to get a deeper understanding of a specialty or are you aiming to get a taste of different fields? And something else to find out is that some medical schools actually only require attendance for half of that penciled out elective time. So really you could spend the first month doing the placement as is required by the university and the other month you could go traveling. So if there is a certain area of the world that you've always wanted to go and visit, this could be a really great opportunity for you. Next up, decide if you want to go by yourself or if you want to go in a group. So going alone is a really great opportunity to push yourself out of that comfort zone. And really when you're alone, that's when you can immerse yourself in the experience. However, understandably, going in a group is going to give you that support network and make that experience more enjoyable sharing it with your friends. At the end of the day, that's going to depend on your personality and what you think will benefit you the most in this experience. However, you might find that your friendship group actually wants to go to different places. What you can do is pop a message into your year's group chat and try and send out some feelers to see if anyone else wants to go to the same place that you do. Honestly, you'd be surprised that there's probably lots of people in the exact same boat as you who are looking for someone else to want to go to the exact same place that they do. So now let's talk about your experience in the specialty. Do you want to look deeper into a specialty that you already know about? Or do you want to try and have an experience into something you don't really know about? But more importantly, ask yourself, do I want a hands-on experience? And for some people that might be a no-brainer, either yes or no. But it is a very important question because some universities in certain countries may not allow you to do that. Mostly understandably for safety reasons. If that's the case, then you'd be there as an observership. So in that respect, you'd be there just to observe or to watch rather than being able to do anything as such on your own. So this can be a very crucial factor in your decision making, so definitely look into that. The next question is what kind of skills do you want to improve? Maybe you want to learn to suture properly. Maybe it is you want to work on your clinical skills. Or maybe it's actually that you want to get better at research and find some opportunities there. So different electives are going to give you those different opportunities. So align your choice with your own learning goals. Just remember that not everything has to be clinical medicine. So if that's not where your interests lie, there will be something else out there for you. Now, although for the most part, we tend to associate the elective with an abroad experience, that doesn't need to be the case. On the one hand, going abroad can be your opportunity to see how different healthcare systems differ and give you that enriching experience outside of your everyday life. However, if you find something that aligns with your learning goals closer to home, that can actually help logistically on the one hand, but also if you're hoping to save some money, this is a great choice for you. So let's recap. When you're in the brainstorming phase of your elective, ask yourself, do I want to split this or not? Do I want to go by myself or do I want to go with a group? Do I want to go with a specific specialty or am I there just for the experience? Are there any skills that I want to improve? And do I want to travel away or do I want to stay closer to home? Just starting with these five factors is gonna help you to make a well-informed decision. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this helped to just get the ball rolling, get you started and having you think about what you want to do for your elective. So if you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel just below. So with that being said, I'll see you guys soon.